Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Trace video and today we're going to be playing Superbike 22 and it is time to start our career mode with the Pedicini Kawasaki. You may have seen the intro video earlier on today where I just introduced the team and now we're here in career mode. Now of course I've been holding out for this, I've been waiting for the moment to do it because we've been waiting for the career mode to be updated and fixed and with absolute elation I can say it is fixed. So we are going to do the free practice, excuse me, the winter practice, the winter test, and let's see what we can figure out with this Kawasaki. Now I have changed a few things, if you've not really kept up my videos recently, I've changed the way I uh, move the control around, so I've changed some of the configuration, changed a uh, downshift to R1 for example, so I can use the rear brake as square, and still downshift at the same time, which is working really well for me, and I'm quite happy with the improvements I've made with my gearing. Now a few things to mention as well, uh, difficulty in this session is currently at 115% AI difficulty. I wasn't sure if we could tackle 120 yet, but after a video yesterday I felt pretty confident against the 120%, so might actually push it up to 120%. So for now, the positions we'll see probably aren't indicative of what's going to be happening for the rest of the season. I do want to be pushed, but I also don't want to make it too difficult, so then the point of the videos are no longer really that interesting. So, we'll definitely see what we can do, but it's a good problem to have to be uh, chasing the pack and trying to become faster. But regarding the winter testing, we have three packages to choose from. Package one that we're on right now, which has a low amount of engine speed, but great reactivity. Now, I noticed on each package, Every single one of them has high reactivity, but low, uh, but high tyre consumption. So every single bike that I use in these packages all have the exact same feeling, except the engine. So basically, we're going to have to be very careful with tyre consumption for this season. We've got 12 championship rounds and a lot of races to tackle. So around 36 races in total. We should be right on it by the end of the season but we've got to pay attention to the tyres. Qualifying is probably going to be one of those parts that I'm going to have to really focus on getting the most out of the SCQ and potentially for races SCQ, SCXs might not be the option for us. But I'm keen to find out how we're going to do, really curious to see. I'm really looking forward to actually starting this, it's been a long time coming or it certainly feels like it. I felt like we would already started career mode right now if it was MotoGP. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, and I haven't neglected MotoGP 22 yet, just riding the wave of Superbike 22 for now, and until we uh, really want to jump back onto 20, uh, MotoGP 22, and we'll be staying with Superbike for now. So, into turn 13, then, with a lot of time of the winter testing remaining, We've got Tati Mercado leading the way in a 140-291. Be curious to see if the Honda is competitive in this game. Now, we did find that the Honda for Happy Siren when I was in Mandalika was very competitive. And of course the Honda of Xavi Vieje and uh, Ica Lacabona, the factory yacht Honda team is just brilliant. I really like that bike, so I did consider joining the Honda team and I also considered joining the, I think it was the Ducati team, one of the uh, well, Barney Racing one I do believe it was, and even one of the Yamahas. But I'm having a tough time with the Yamaha in this game, so it didn't really make sense for me and there's no way I could turn down an opportunity to ride alongside Leon Haslam. Granted, virtual racing or not, I'm happy to have Leon Haslam as my teammate. And he, he is the ultimate challenger. He is the man we need to be looking at every weekend to try and beat. I do hope we can, and I'm pretty confident we will. But Leon Haslam is target number one. So back to the winter testing. We're currently in 10th place, just six tenths of a second down from Leandro Mercado. We're going to keep an eye on Jonathan Ray. I'm looking at a red sector time for the man on board the factory Kawasaki, and never mind about that anymore. Locatelli moving the goalpost. He's now set a 140-227 for the man on board the factory Yamaha. So keep an eye on Locatelli in this one. Maybe he's going to have some breakout races this season and get back on to the podium. But now into the Portimao corner, here in Portimao, of course. Doing a pretty decent job, but I will confess, since the recording of this video, I did change a few things. Like, I have gone for anti-wheelie 3, and I've begun to prefer TCS 2. I find I'm not abusing the rear tyre as much as I was, but right now with the SC1 and DX1 tyre, I think it's a good combination for a good few laps before we start making a bit of a hash of things. So now into the gallop for turn 15. I do feel that this is where we're going to gain a lot of time against the AI due to 
the difficulty level because the AI are really slow on the streets and with Power Setting 3 enabled we're giving it quite a lot of welly across the line and we are going to be at the top position, the first 139 of the session. Brilliantly done from the man on board the Pedicini Kawasaki. So now into turn one for the Primera corner we have Oliver, Oliver Koenig ahead of us in 25th position, not the session he would have wanted on his Kawasaki, but now into Largos for turn three, keeping it in nice and tight there, I don't think you could have got any tighter there without touching the apex, and the same can be said for turn four. But with Power Sunning three enabled and Oliver Kerning ahead of us, we do get a bit of slipstream, but I think he is going to hinder our progression into Tor VIP, he's still there in the position of the circuit, it would have been nice for him to move out the way considering he is on an outlap, and we are on a fast lap, so move over please, but he isn't going to do it right now. So into turn 8 for the Samsung corner. A little bit offline there for the man on board the Kawasaki, but still very, very strong nonetheless. Avoid the wheelie at all possible costs and now go to the left-hand side for the Craig Jones. I'm desperate to get on through on Kerning here, but I just can't find the spot. Around the outside for Portimao, it's not going to be. Turn 11... Possibly into turn 12. I'm going to have to move on through sooner or later. There it is. Squeezing through and now breaking hard for the difficult turn 13. I do like this corner, but it is a difficult one to get right. But when you do get it right, it's very satisfying and you can feel praise and confidence knowing that you're still pushing on your outlap and you're still pushing quite fast as we go into Sagresh and then into the Galp for turn 15. So onto the right hand side of the time, we're going to bring on the power, give it everything we've got coming out of the right hand here, and now into the closest part of the rumble strip there without actually going on it, and getting a small wheelie there will compromise a bit of speed, but it didn't really affect us too much, just four tenths of a second down on our previous best, which of course was the 139, which got us into the top three positions. So with a tenth behind us is Ika Lekawona and Andrea Locatelli, who did briefly lead the way, I'm still not seeing the top rack, Raz Gatioglu. No world champion in the top eight as of yet. That's a strange thing. I, I did not expect to not see him there. I certainly expect him to be right up there with the best of them. But Jonathan Ray at the top. It's a good sign for the boys on the Kawasaki. Johnny Ray, Grant in third. Lowe's in eighth. Good to see the Kawasaki's being competitive at this stage of the uh, winter testing. But now into the right-hand side for turn seven. Approaching... The difficult turn eight is going to go try and tight as you like here for the right hander, which we certainly achieved this time around. Bringing on the power and avoiding the wheelie. Nope, never mind about avoiding the wheelie. Certainly could consider upping it up to anti wheelie three. I, I think I did try it in the end in Aragon, but for now, it's not really working out. And I'm not really seeing the benefit of this second package, but we are only on the second lap, so I guess give it time for now. But breaking on the left hand side for turn 13 once again keeping it in as tight as we like and uh, for the next lap or two I think I'm going to do another lap with the second package but I don't know what it is probably just a placebo effect but it does feel a little bit looser compared to the first one so this is the second package which includes a middle ground of engine performance uh, package one was a slower engine performance and pa package three which we'll try in a lap's time is full engine performance and as I mentioned earlier tire degradation is high on all of them but reactivity is high as well so we've probably got a bit of a glass cannon here with the Kawasaki I think if we get into some real scraps we're gonna start pushing and we could find ourselves crashing a lot which I'm a little bit concerned about but I just need to be smooth confident and get the feeling of the brakes and I don't think we'll be crashing as much as I hope let's say <laughs> But in my suspension settings as well, I'm not actually running default right now. I'm running a suspension all on the lowest setting for the top four or five particular um, objects to change, if you will. So I'm running the oil quantity as normal, but the rest of it is pretty low down, which means a more agile and more nimble bike, but it can be a bit unstable. So we do have to pay attention to that for the uh, foreseeable future. But coming out now of the uh, second excuse me, the second sector, yes, we're doing the second sector now, across the sector time, are we going to improve, are we going to keep the same, it's going to come up any moment now, it's going to wait for, ah, never mind about that, <laughs> we've gone down, package setting 2 has finished for today. So now then, on to package setting 3, this is ultimate performance now, this is full in engine performance, so we're going to get the fastest version of this Kawasaki that we can possibly use for this career mode. 
Now I was able to upgrade the bike a little bit before the uh, actual winter testing. You manipulated some of the uh, engineers to be in a certain area to make sure they got enough research points. And then of course going into the season we will have development stuff to do as well. But for the time being, quite happy with this and very happy with that first sector time. Only a tenth of a second down to Jonathan Ray. But I have noticed with this one, you guys have probably noticed it as well, we are quite close for the first two sectors. The third sector we start to lose it a lot. And then the fourth sector we can claw it all back by having a fast motorcycle. So this could be very, very similar here. But still on the SC1 and DX1 tyres. As we now go to the left hand side for the Craig Jones corner. A very difficult section of track we got from turn 9 into turn 10 and then into 11. It's a very difficult couple of corners there. It's a, it's a sequence that you have to be on your game for and I've got to say I think we did alright there. A little bit of a wheelie going into the uh, the big horsepower part but apart from that it was not too bad. I think we just need to uh, be careful with that one. I did consider moving up to anti-wheelie 3 but I'm still running what I've been using because I feel that this is the best sort of confidence build I've got. If I go any different with the settings I lose a bit of confidence so still working on that but 7 tenths of a second down into the gallop this is going to be where the engine performance will take over as we give it some welly coming out of the final corner, avoiding the rumble strip. But we did really well there just by reducing the throttle ever so gently. We go up into second position. No, we stay the same, but just 46 thousandth of a second down from Jonathan Ray's time. What a lap time. We clawed all of that back in that final sector. But now I'm a little bit concerned because if we do move it up to 120% difficulty, how far down are we going to be? Definitely going to have to look into that when we go to Aragon in a couple of videos time. So now into the left hand side for the Tour VIP. A little bit wide, but 25 thousandth of a second down to Jonathan Ray's first time sector, or first sector in his fastest lap time. We've still got a chance here. I know it doesn't really matter much if we finish 10th, 12th, 15th, whatever, but at least it gives us a good indication of where we're, where we're going to be against the AI if things stay the same. So I'm going to focus now on more so consistency. Yes, we can get fast lap times if we can, but if we can keep being consistent, as we almost lose the front there going into the Craig Jones corner, but if we can keep on it and keep doing similar lap times as the AI, then I'm happy. Got to be a happy man. Don't have to keep beating them, but we've got to keep similar. Keep that race pace going. With power sending 3, TCS 1, the electronics as they are, pretty good so far. And the, the tyres we've chosen are good as well. I've only really gone for the softer option front tyre, haven't really tried the medium front, and I don't think I will until I feel we really, really need it. But coming out of the third sector, it is a white sector, so we aren't going to be improving this time around. But into the gallop for the seventh time I'm asking, I think. This is probably my seventh lap as we now go into the back straight. A little bit of acceleration there into fifth gear, into sixth gear across the line. Oh, it's another improvement. But this time we're down by 11 thousandth of a second. Great improvement there, but wow. That is close, and we've actually set identical lap times with Alvaro Bautista. So that is something to be certainly be proud of. The rookie coming into Superbike for the very first time, of course, and now a first Superbike career mode on this channel. So for that reason, let's have a little like and a subscribe if you don't mind. I think uh, I think we're going to celebrate this one for quite a while. Enjoying Superbike 22, and I hope you guys are too as well, especially since the update has now fixed the career mode. And into turn 6 and now leaning it across for turn 7. It's a corner I don't feel I have much confidence with in Superbike 22. Felt pretty good in MotoGP as we went really close to the apex there for Samsung. The right elbow was just scraping across the rumble strip as we positioned the Kawasaki into the right hand side. But now into the difficult part and there it is. Caught me off guard into the Portimao corner. The first time or second time let's say I've made a big mistake into that particular corner. We won't be improving the lap time, but I'm keen to get back into the pits, have a fresh couple of tyres, and God knows how that invalidated the lap. <laughs> so let's call it quits on this lap and let's move to the next one. So after the time has accelerated forward, we've now got 82 minutes of this session. I probably won't be using the full 82 minutes, but uh, the goalposts have been changed. The 37-year-old Spaniard has now gone up to the top of the timing sheets with a 139.379. So that is a very solid lap time from him. And bearing in mind we are now five tenths of a second behind, but in fourth position. So if we're going to be four tenths of a second behind and still going to be in the top four for races, that's probably going to be a bridge too far to breach for uh, for in for actual race victories. But podiums would still be on offer. 
And we're right there with Jonathan Ray as the top Kawasaki, so we've definitely got to keep an eye on that for now. If we can just get those 11th hours of a second and get ahead of the factory Kawasaki, then I would say that is a bloody good day of winter testing. Xavi Vieje, rapid in second position there on board the factory Honda. Top right, Razgatioglu back into the pits in seventh. He's not having the session we would have imagined. It's probably not going all peachy for him, but into the third split. Three and a half tenths of a second down to Alvaro Bautista. That is a personal best lap time for us, so we do have a good chance of improving here. But ironically, 11,000th of a second behind Jonathan Ray is the same number I've chosen for World Superbike. Now, of course, you may be wondering why I'm not using number 47 anymore, because if you've watched my other stuff, you'll know that 47 is my racing number. But I will tell you what, number 47 is occupied by Axel Bassani, and unfortunately I don't think I can speak to him in time for him to change his number and ask him to swap it over to something else. So, we've decided to change the number. Big shout out to Sergio23 for making the helmet a number, of course. But across the line we are going to get a ooh, second position. Two tenths of a second down from Elvaro Bautista. That's a great improvement. But regarding the number, number 11 is because the similar reason to 47, 46 plus 1 equals uh, 47, so i.e. Doctor is in Valentino Rossi plus Ace equals 47, if that makes sense. Doctor 46, me, number 1, equals 47, yeah? <laughs> we're, we're good with that one? Okay. So number 11, if you add 4 plus 6 is 10, and add the Ace, it's 11. And also Ace is 1 or 11. So, yeah, number 11. And also inspired by Ben Spees when he was in MotoGP, because I was a big fan of Ben Spees and I really love the number 11. I think number 11 looks great. It does. But I still prefer 47. <laughs> so after a brief segue there, we're going to get back into the winter testing now, and I think we're on a decent lap here. Yes, we're down in the first sector, but if we can get it right into these particular parts, of course the most difficult part of Portimao, we should have a chance of improving, but at this point I don't mind, because second place behind Bautista is certainly nothing to scoff at, is it? That's impressive, and I'm really happy with that. So we're going to get caught in the rumble strip again. This time around, not invalidating the lap, but we've got to be bloody careful from that corner from now on. Got to avoid going onto that part of the rumble strip, because it clearly doesn't favour the Kawasaki. Very bouncy, very springy. It's not ideal, so let's uh, avoid that from the future. But into the gallop to conclude this lap time, we are going to improve, of course. But I think I've got a few more in me to try and improve yet. So bringing on the power... Little bit of a wheel. In fact, we did well there actually. I was expecting a wheelie, but we did all right on the acceleration. But across the line, we are down by seven tenths. So back into the 140s for the first time in quite a while. That's a disappointment. But also at the same time, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. But still, pack three is no doubt the pack I'm going to use. I don't see any purpose for going for a similar package to the others, but with just less performance. The only thing it would do is just give it maybe a bit easier on the corners, it would be very gentle and maybe, maybe it would be a little bit better for the tyre degradation, but since the tyre degradation was high on all of them, I think package 3 is the package to choose and if you can give me more speed on the straights, I reckon I can claw it back on the brakes and even into some of the corners as well. But now, into the right hand side for Samsung, probably going to be my last lap now and I think we're doing alright for, for lap time, so if we finish second overall in this session then Today's a good day. <laughs> Today is a brilliant, brilliant winter testing. But now onto the right-hand side, getting a bit more confident with the brakes there. Seeing it's just skipping on the rear tyre. Not ideal for that corner, but it was pretty nice. It certainly looked impressive, so I'll take that one. But now onto the brakes of the difficult turn 13. Keep it in as tight as you can without running across the rumble strip. The number 11 is charging now to the right-hand side for Sagresh. Are we going to be up or down? We're down by 7 and a half tenths of a second. It is what it is, but the end of this session is upon us, and I've got to say I'm very, very happy with the results. Yes, we're going to have to change the difficulty level because it could be a little bit too easy. So bringing on the power, little bit of a wheelie. No, we did it well. We did it well again. I'm happy with the way I'm holding that line there, but across the line, just down by four tenths of a second. So then, guys, that's the end of winter testing. No doubt we're going to go for package setting three. Spoiler alert, of course. But uh, that is the end, so hopefully you'll join me for the rest of the career mode. Videos will be coming soon. I've not quite decided how I'm going to do it yet. I think all three races will probably be just in one video. So stick around, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe if you really enjoyed it, and let me know if you'll be there for the rest of the Grand Prix. Thanks for watching, guys, and ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. 
Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.